is Bob Lazar telling the truth or is he full of BS? Well, according to a great body language expert, he is in fact telling the truth. This is amazing. Get in here. This is Jack with Cosmic Road. I talk about UFOs and the paranormal. Please hit like, please subscribe, share on social media, and please comment below as I'm going through the story. Also, please consider becoming a channel member to support the channel. See the first line in the description below, or simply leave a tip in the tip jar with the super thanks feature below. Or heck, I'm a novelist. Buy one of my books on Amazon. Link in the description. There's a couple of my books. I've got a cat that wants to say hello. Hello, Alejandro. <laughs> yeah, it's usually Baxter that makes an appearance, but today we get Alex. Moving on. The YouTube channel Believing Bruce is a great YouTube channel uh, about uh, studying people's body language. It's got over 200,000 subscribers. Really terrific channel. I uh, recommend you check it out. Link in the description below. And uh, yeah, so a year ago, he sat down to analyze the interview that Bob Lazar gave with Joe Rogan, a really fantastic interview. And I'm sure that many of you have seen it. It's a long interview, but really a good one. And uh, so he studies this video intently, and he comes to the conclusion that Bob is, in fact, telling the truth. This is huge. This is amazing. All right. I'm just going to let you see what Believing Bruce has to say. Here it goes. Do I think Bob Lazar is telling the truth? On the information that I've got, not looking at anything else, only Bob Lazar's reactions and everything that I've just talked about, there is nothing, 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 there is nothing there that I could say conclusively, conclusively, to strongly point out that Bob Lazar is a liar. Nothing. And again, I'm not in one camp or the other, and I need you to appreciate that. There is nothing that Bob Lazar has done that would indicate to me, on this footage alone, on this footage, and again, what I would say is that I would like to speak to Bob, or anybody who I'm interviewing, because if I can see your face, if I can see your hands, again, there wasn't much hands with Joe Rogan, it was the sort of torso up, the hands and the feet and the legs, that's where you get a load of body language for. And again, if I was looking at Bob directly, I wouldn't have to rely on camera edits just to capture everything because I'm there. I've got all the data in front of me. But on Joe Rogan's podcast, with all the questions that Bob answered, at the most specific, authentic, intense time between him and Joe Rogan, before Jeremy started coming in and changed the dynamic, do I believe Bob Lazar is telling the truth? I do. I absolutely believe that he is telling the truth. Yeah, I would like to ask some more questions, etc., just to make sure. But if I had to sit on one part or the other, for me, Bob Lazar, absolutely truthful. Isn't that wild? So, what does it all mean? If indeed Bob is telling the truth, something that I have determined a long time ago, uh, what does that imply? Well, obviously it means that we've been reverse engineering alien technology at Area 51 or S4 uh, low these many years. Now we know from multiple sources, very credible sources, that there is a global crash retrieval program. I just did a video a few days ago about Ross Coulthard talking about crash retrievals in Australia. Actually, U.S. Uh, um, people, men in black type guys, going over there. Oh, and they were working on behalf of a aerospace company going to Australia to retrieve a downed UFO. Interestingly, he talked about Australian, uh, an Australian crash retrieval team going outside of Australia to retrieve a UFO. So that was really intriguing uh, why people from outside of Australia would go to Australia and people from Australia would go outside of Australia. You know, I don't know what that means, but it's a thing. In James Fox's new movie, Moment of Contact, uh, he studies the Virginia Brazil case. And uh, of course, what happens with the downed UFO? the men in black show up. Or I guess we should really differentiate, you know, the men in black from the control group 
or the crash retrieval program, they do seem to go hand in hand. Um, and indeed, you know, people were going around trying to shut people up, getting them to stop talking about this. And I associate that with the men in black. But it was actually the military that came and retrieved the craft. But yeah, so crash retrievals all over the place. Uh, you know, I, I did a video a few weeks ago, maybe a couple of months ago, about Lance Corporal Weigand, uh, who also saw a, or who, heck, he didn't just see it. He actually went into the crashed UFO and uh, interacted with a being and uh, then was promptly arrested by the Air Force. Uh, and I want to say that was in Br Brazil, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong on that. And uh, he was, uh, when he was arrested, he was taken to the actual uh, base of the control group and uh, saw that it was a multinational effort. There were people from China there. So does that mean the control group is a multinational consortium? Was that a one-off incident where there are multiple nations and, you know, doing stuff there? And it is intriguing that multiple of these cases are from Brazil. So... You know, it, it was was in, in the moment of contact in the James Fox, Virginia, uh, Brazil case. What were they, were the people that retrieved that craft operating out of the same base uh, that arrested Lance Corporal Weigand? I don't know, but it's interesting food for thought. Anyway, Bob Lazar's case has been, you know, vetted and, and verified numerous times. Uh, go, go watch the excellent documentary by Jeremy Corbell and George Knapp. They talk about things like, you know, Bob years ago saying uh, to get into the base, he had to put his hand on this weird hand imprint device that was just found a few years ago. Nobody had been able to find this thing or verify Bob's uh, story uh, for many years, and suddenly this device was uh, found, confirming his account, or at least that detail. Now, not everybody agrees with Bob or believes in Bob. Chris Millen has gone on record, for example, saying that he does not believe Bob's story, and I think that's very interesting. He says he does not believe Bob's story because he was told by somebody that he knows at Area 51 that it was BS. Well, I don't know Chris's source. I trust Bob a lot more than I trust Chris Millen's source, who may very well have been lying to him and perpetuating the cover-up. Until Chris's source comes out and explains why he thinks the way he thinks, it's really hard to judge what he has to say. But I have seen enough evidence over the years to uh, believe Bob Lazar's story. Now, I think there's some really interesting uh, nuances there. Um, you know, did he really have the... Um, you know, did he really go to the schools that he claims to have gone? Uh, because uh, on the Joe Rogan show, apparently after the show was over, uh, Joe asked Bob uh, some pointed questions and he got some interesting answers, kind of answering some of these questions, you know, uh, like, for example, about the school credentials. So, but, but Joe Rogan has not revealed what Bob had to say, probably because it doesn't make Bob look good. Uh, I suspect he fudged some stuff uh, and admitted that to Joe, uh, but Joe isn't telling. Another interesting wrinkle in the story is um, the, the weird drink that Bob Lazar was made to drink, this pine-scented drink that he was uh, compelled to drink. Uh, before starting work every day at S4. What was that? He didn't know, but he was also made to undergo hypnosis. And furthermore, he has at least one or possibly two incidents of uh, encountering a being there at S4. One time he just saw one in a room, uh, maybe, and another time, uh, there seems to have been a being that was interacting with him telepathically behind a partition in one of these hospital areas, probably where he was hypnotized. I suspect that his interactions with the beings there goes far beyond that. Um, and, you know, maybe 
he was being hypnotized and given this drink in order to make wiping his mind easier or something uh, so that he was actually having uh, much deeper and more complicated interactions with the beings there. That's something you get with Area 51 and alien abductions and all sorts of stuff. That the evidence strongly suggests that the government and the military is working with the beings. Uh, you get that time after time in alien abduction cases. People will see the beings working with military types. You know, a really great case that I love to bring up is the Terry Loveless case. I love that because he's a very credible guy, a veteran. He has been vetted by no less than Lou Elizondo. And he saw over 50 military types aboard a giant UFO interacting with the beings there. Many other people have been taken by the beings when they were abducted to some sort of government facility, possibly underground. Uh, you know, their, their, their memories are foggy and messed with, but it seems to have been some sort of cavernous place underground. Could that be Area 51? Could that be one of the deep underground military bases, the Dumbs? It's hard to say, but it does seem like there's strong evidence to suggest that the control group is working with the beings. And um, so could Bob Lazar at Area 51 or S4 have been working with the beings and then his mind was wiped so that he does not remember that? I think that makes a lot of sense uh, and it kind of explains why the military and the government uh, allowed him to live. Um, hear me out. Uh, it's because he only knew a piece of the puzzle. They had wiped his mind so that he could not remember uh, the more, you know, exotic experiences that he had. You know, they, they thought it was what the, the knowledge that he had was safe to bring forward to the public. You know, they probably wouldn't believe him anyway. He didn't have a lot of evidence or proof. Then in any case, he wasn't really, um, you know, able to disclose the deeper level stuff because it had been wiped from his mind. Now, that's just a theory of mine based on the weird drink that he was made to drink and the hypnosis he was made to undergo, undergo and the experience that he had uh, that he believes, it's a recovery memory that he has, of interacting with this being behind a partition in the hospital uh, at S4. So, and if he had that recovered memory interacting with that one being, I imagine there are other memories that he could uncover um, in time. But if any of that is true, how does it make any sense? Because why would we need to reverse engineer alien technology if the aliens are already there? Maybe the aliens of one race are helping us to reverse engineer the technology of another race? I don't know. It doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense. But there you go. Anyway, those are my thoughts, guys. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. Please smash the subscribe button and hit the bell so you don't miss a single video. Please join me on social media. There's Facebook and Twitter links below. And please, if you enjoy these videos, please consider supporting the channel by becoming a channel member. See the first line in the description below. And there's two tiers of membership to receive exclusive access in videos. Until next time, this is Jack with Cosmic Road.